Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Mr. Media tutorial, I'll be taking a look at the difference between using a LUT for doing an initial image transform and using the color space transform plugin. So, inside Resolve, here we've got our same clip from last time when we were doing primary correction, and this is in that same sort of vein. So we had a comment on the last video that said, why don't you just use a LUT to do your initial transformation, and you totally can. And that was a good way of doing it for a while, but let me show you why you should be using the color space transform tool instead, which is only available in the studio version, I'm pretty sure. Um, so if you're on the fence, you know, it's, it's one of my favorite plugins in there. So first of all, we've got this image. This was shot on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, the old one, not the, the 4K one. So we will go ahead and just add in a LUT like we would before. So go to LUTs, 3D LUT, Blackmagic Design, and this uses the same color space as the cinema camera. So we'll go to Blackmagic Cinema Camera Film to Rec. 709 V2. Pop that on. And see, that looks, you know, fine. That looks okay. It does about what we want it to. It sort of expanded our image out. So now I've got some place to work from. But let's see what happens whenever we do the color space transform instead. So I'm going to hit Control Y to create a new version. And then Control Home to reset all grades and nodes. And then I'll go over to Open Effects tab and drag Color Space Transform on. And here we've got our input color space, which is sort of the first part of our LUT. So that was the Blackmagic Design Film and black magic design film and we'll put our output to rec 709 and i'm just typing r on the keyboard to get down to the r in there and now you see if we hit Control b we can switch between these two so version two is our color space transform version one is our lut and if we look at these highlights especially on our shoulder here we're getting some more intense stuff you see that the lut is clipping this sort of rolling it off and clipping it in a way that's not particularly nice and our color space transform isn't making it look particularly nice right now either, but there are some other controls we can add in to make it a little bit nicer. So we'll go over to tone mapping, which will help us roll things off a little bit better. So the LUT will just clip the image if it's above a certain point, while the color space transform uses more math so it can roll things off a little bit better. So if we change this to simple, this is just a predefined curve that maps from 100 nits to 5,500 nits and sort of rolls it off in a nice way. And it does a really good job. But we can go down and do luminance mapping, which is a little bit more complex way of doing it. You see not much has changed, but if you look down, especially down at this part of the image, if we switch between these two, you see there's just a little bit of a difference. And so there isn't like a particularly right one to use, but the luminance mapping is what I always default to. And that gives you some more control. So if you are doing um, some sort of master from HDR, then you can use a custom max input and max output. So right now, I know since we're in SDR, we want our max output in it to be 100. And you can see we actually have to put our max input up higher. And that's because the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera has something like 12 or 13 stops of dynamic range. And the SDR color space only has um, 8 or 9. I'm pretty sure I've heard it as low as 5, but 8 or 9 is the general numbers that I've heard out there. So you will need to map these down. So you can see if we put it at just 100, like I said before, we get it looking not very nice. But if we say our top point is, you know, more around 500 or so, then that looks pretty nice. But most of the times, I just leave this the way it is and it looks pretty nice. And they also have this adaptation, which is uh, another sort of HDR-ish feature that I generally just leave alone. And now we have our gamut mapping. And you don't really see too much of a difference here, but this is for um, whenever a camera is recording a, a really large color space. And here the pocket cinema cameras everything is pretty compressed in there we're shooting the bm film so if we get saturation mapping we don't really get a whole lot a whole lot of difference here but you can see we can bring our max saturation down and we can sort of simulate what might happen if we had um a different image before this so if i hit shift s i'll create a new node and we'll just artificially inflate our saturation and now you can see if we cap off our max saturation some and we bring our saturation knee down and sort of help round that out some. So the saturation knee is at what point this starts rolling off the saturation. So sort of desaturating the most saturated parts. So it works a lot like our saturation versus saturation curve. But like I said, with this particular thing, we can leave it alone as long as we delete the silly node beforehand. And now we have it looking really good. And you might say, Theo, that's great, but that's a lot of buttons to press. Well, the good thing about this is, especially if you're using the same camera a lot, you can just create a power grade from this and drop this on at the beginning of your grade. So if you hit right click, grab still, and then go over to your gallery, now we have this. So if I reset all grades and nodes, we can just drag this over. We've got all of our settings on there before. So I've got that. And now if we're doing this as part of our primary color correction workflow, we can just hit Alt S to create a new node. 
go over and we can white balance this just a little bit. And sorry if this is a little bit off. I have the lights on in my office right now, so everything is not quite as accurate. But there we go. And now we have a nice primary color correction on this. Very, very quick and easy. And it works really well. And so if you're using something like DaVinci Resolve, Color Manage, or Asus, um, this color space transform does essentially what's sort of built into those things. But if you're still in YRGB, which is totally understandable, it's nice and stable and works well, this is a great way of getting things transformed correctly or trying to match cameras together in a little bit more mathematical way. So I like the color space transform tool a lot. I think it is much better than using a LUT. So, you know, before this is a LUT, I guess we should take off that to make it more fair. But you can see this is a much smoother, nicer image to work from than this, which has these sort of harsh overdone parts. So anyway, if you're using a LUT right now, try the color space transform. It has a lot of built-in things into it and a lot of built-in things for the output. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know once again, not particularly sexy one, but a really useful one. And if you are still using input transform LUTs, I think this will make your stuff look better, easier, faster, etc. So anyway, if you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. Let me know what sort of other tutorials you're wanting to see. Also, be sure to check out meastmedia.com slash products where we have all sorts of good stuff to check out, including LUTs that are not used for input transforms. So if we drop on, I've got some here. Look at that. Just right on there. That's a look. Very cool. If we hit something before that, just brighten up our image some, reduce the gain on this. Look at that. We've got a look just in a couple seconds. Check that out. Meastmedia.com slash products. We've also got some stock stuff there. And there's, like I've been saying, some really cool stuff coming out there soon. So... Check that. Oh, and there's free stuff. So check out the free stuff too. Free lets, free stock stuff. There's no reason to not go. So anyway, once again, I've been Theo with Meester Media. Have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.